Hello, my name is Darcy, and this is my YouTube channel, Fostering Cats. And today I'm going to talk about how ringworm is not as contagious as you think. If you search on Google or social media, you will soon believe that feline ringworm is extremely contagious, spreads easily, and will infect your home for years. I frequently see people tell these stories about how they brought a kitten in, discovered it had ringworm, and then suddenly Everybody in their house got ringworm. They got ringworm. Their kids got ringworm. The dog got ringworm. Their, all their cats got ringworm. The neighbor's kids got ringworm. Their grandmother, who died three years earlier and is buried in a different state, got ringworm. All from this little kitten. I just shake my head because that's not what the science suggests. And so I'm going to give you the real information here about how contagious ringworm is. But before I can do that, I need to give you an important disclaimer. I'm not a vet. This is not veterinary advice. While I have fostered over 100 cats and kittens with ringworm and worked in, and volunteered in high intake shelters, plus read everything that there is on feline ringworm, I don't want you to believe me. I don't want you to believe social media. I want you to believe credible sources. So I'm going to include all of my sources in the video description and at the end of this video so that you can go and look and see what it says. But let's begin. The primary method of transmission of microsporin canis ringworm is direct contact with an infected animal. Now, just to clarify, cats can actually get three different types of ringworm, but microsporin canis accounts for 92 to 98% of all feline ringworm. And so that's what I'm talking about today because it's the most common type of ringworm. True infection from exposure to a contaminated environment is rare. Rare. It doesn't happen. To get ringworm, the following must occur. You must be exposed to a critical mass of infective spores. This mass of spores must evade the host protective mechanisms, including but not limited to the hair coat, grooming, and the skin's immune system. And, and this is very key, some type of microtrauma or small injury must be present. So what is a microtrauma? Sometimes I see this referred to as a microabrasion, but it's basically just these tiny cuts that you might not see on your skin. And they can be caused by a variety of things, such as ectoparasites like fleas and ear mites, trauma from bites or scratches, matted hair, shaving, maceration of the skin from high humidity, scruffing with leather gloves, poor husbandry practices, just to name a few. But the importance of microtrauma in developing ringworm was shown in an experimental infection study done on people. Woods lamp positive infective microsperm canis hairs were placed on the scalp, but ringworm did not develop unless the application was associated with concurrent microtrauma. In that case, it was gently rubbing with the thumb. So contact with the contaminated environment alone in the absence of concurrent microtrauma is an exceedingly rare source of infection in both people and animals. And in fact, there's only been like one proven case. And in that case, it was a young boy who went into a car that had transported a bunch of cats with ringworm and he got ringworm from the car. Fomite transmission has only been documented when there is also microtrauma. Environmental contamination can result in a cat having a positive culture for ringworm, but not actually having ringworm. So what do we mean when we talk about fomite transmission of ringworm? Fomite transmission is when an inanimate object transfers an infected material between animals. Now this type of transmission is more likely when the fomite causes microtrauma. Fomites that might cause microtrauma include clipper blades, grooming tools, collars, and leather gloves. Studies have shown that it is difficult, if not impossible, for people and pets to get ringworm from contaminated vet clinics, exam rooms, and homes. So just to kind of summarize, what besides direct contact might spread ringworm? Bedding, clipper blades, grooming tools, collars, leather gloves, essentially items that had direct contact and have a heavy load of ringworm spores, especially if they cause microtrauma. What things won't spread ringworm? exam rooms, vet clinics, floors, vents and air ducts, homes that previously housed pets with ringworm, wind. As you can see, all of these are linked to studies. So this is not my opinion. This is what the science has proven. Now, 
I do need to clarify that exposure from a contaminated environment can be a risk factor for transmission if the patient is debilitated, has chronic skin issues, and or has any inflammatory skin disease. I can't really go into any more detail on that because I'm not a dermatologist either. If you have a skin condition, talk to your doctor or your dermatologist about your possibility of getting ringworm. Now, I know what you want to know. How easy is it for humans to get ringworm from cats via direct contact? Unfortunately, there's so many factors to all of this that it's almost impossible to determine or to give you a good estimate. But remember, without microtrauma, a person will not get ringworm. Now, good kind of indicator, athlete's foot and jock itch are both types of ringworm. So if you're somebody who frequently gets athlete's foot, then you're more likely to get ringworm from a cat. You're also more at risk if you have a chronic skin issue or have an inflammatory skin disease. So if this is something that is your an issue, wear gloves and long sleeves when handling and always wash your hands afterwards. Now, I will admit that I don't have any kind of skin condition. I don't wear gloves or long sleeves when I am handling ringworm cats. I don't have an issue with getting ringworm. I do wash my hands frequently, so I don't do that, but that's a good advice if you are concerned. And keep in mind that if you do get ringworm, that in humans, ringworm stops being contagious 48 hours after treatment begins, and treatment can be purchased over the counter. Keep the spot covered for the first 48 hours to prevent spread, and within 48 hours, it's no longer contagious. Now, what I want you to understand, and this is probably the most important thing, getting a ringworm cat to stop being contagious is easy and quick. Proper cleaning plus twice weekly whole body topical treatment resulted in homes being free of infective material within one week of starting treatment and remaining so throughout the study. Lime sulfur and anaconazole are preferred as these products have residual activity. However, myconazole plus chlorhexidine Ketoconazole plus chlorhexidine or Climazole plus chlorhexidine shampoos are alternatives. Enoconazole is not available in the U.S., FYI. Topical therapy must be done twice weekly from time of diagnosis until cured. And note, we're not talking about creams, sprays, all of the topical spot treatments you guys like to do. That doesn't get a cat to be stop being contagious. So if you're doing that, you got to consider the cat to still be contagious. Now, I also want to briefly cover cleaning. I will be doing a video all about cleaning, but just to give you an idea of what they mean when they're talking about cleaning. So the steps in cleaning. Mechanically remove debris. Vacuum or the Swiffers are great at collecting hair. Wash the surface with the detergent until visibly clean. So you just need to get rid of all the dirt. Rinse to remove the detergent residue. Remove the excess water. And then disinfect to kill any spores not removed by the above steps. Now you can use an over-the-counter bathroom disinfectant labeled as effective against trichophyton species, like Lysol. Just to clarify, over-the-counter bathroom disinfectants, including Lysol, do not kill things like panleukopenia, but they do kill ringworm. And for effective cleaning, remove debris and hair daily, disinfect twice a week. The purpose of cleaning is to minimize fomite carriage on the hair coat, which can prolong treatment because it interferes with determination of cure. What that means, the environment is contaminated, you're going to get cultures that are positive, even though the cat is cured of the ringworm. And so in order to get a good negative culture, which is used to determine cure, you need to make sure that the environment is clean from all uh, spores. And that's it. That's the brief summary of all this information. But if you doubt anything I said here, this is where I got the information. And you go back and look, and I will have put one of these little codes to indicate this is the sources. If there's no code, it's because it either was mentioned in all of these sources, or it's because I basically... It was just kind of general common knowledge and didn't feel like it needed to be sourced. You can always hit me up and I'll tell you where I got it from, but it was generally things I didn't feel like needed to be sourced. Thank you for watching my video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. 
both of these things help get this video in front of more people. If you have a topic you'd like me to cover, put it in the comments. You can also reach out to me. Uh, you can find me on my website, fosteringcats.com. I have both a Facebook group and a Facebook page titled Ringworm Cats and Kittens. Otherwise, I hope you have a joyous day.